In this video, we're going to look at biotic interactions between organisms. The first one we're going to look at is predation, and predation is where one, usually animal, the, which we call the predator, eats another animal, which we call the prey. So this example is a lion eating a zebra. So the lion is the predator, the zebra is the prey. Allelopathy is something that occurs in plants, and it's when the plant releases a chemical which inhibits the growth of other plants. An example of this is pine needles. Pine needles, as they drop to the or when they drop to the ground, they release a chemical and it stops other plants growing from beneath them. Now we're going to look at. Uh, there's going to be three different interactions. All of these interactions come under the subheading of uh, symbiosis, which is organisms that live together or within a close relationship to each other. Uh, the first one is parasitism, and parasitism occurs when a parasite, so one organism, which is called a parasite, uh, lives on or in another organism, and we call that other organism the host, and causes harm to the host. That's the important part here, that it causes harm to the host. An example of this would be a tick, which is a parasite, and lives on a dog, and the harm that it's causing to the dog is to irritate its skin. So this harm could be uh, something mi as minor as irritating skin, like ticks or fleas, uh, but could be as major as actually killing the host eventually. Although it's not in the interest of the parasite to kill the host, because then it's got to go and find somewhere else to live. The next one uh, under symbiosis is commensalism. And this is where one organism lives on or in another but does not have any effect on it. So rather than causing harm, like in parasitism, in commensalism, it has no effect. A good example of this is the clownfish, which lives among the tentacles of the sea anemone. The sea anemone has poisonous tentacles, uh, so other fish can't get near it. The clownfish has a coating around its scales that make it, well, not get stung by the sea anemone. Uh, so it gets protection from predators because it can go and hide while the predators get stung. Uh, however, this doesn't affect the sea anemone in any way. It doesn't either benefit or harm it. Next one is mutualism. It's where two organisms interact for mutual benefit, so both benefit from this. Uh, a nice example of this is the crocodile, and so after a crocodile's had a feed, it'll open its mouth nice and wide, and a plover will come in and pick the meat from between its teeth. So in this situation, the crocodile gets its teeth cleaned so that they, uh, the meat doesn't rot and decay the teeth, and the plover gets a meal of the meat. So both of these organisms benefit from this relationship. The next one, which isn't technically an interaction, uh, is communal living, so living in a group. Uh, and there's a few reasons why animals live in clusters or groups. One is the safety in numbers, so that uh, they can warn each other of danger if it's coming. Another one, especially for fish and birds, is that they can appear to be bigger. So rather than a little fish, you have a big group of fish, so it can appear to be bigger and Therefore, a predator might choose not to attack it. Uh, the other thing about living in a community is you don't have to swim faster than or run faster than your predator. You only have to run faster, run, swim, or fly faster than the weakest member of your group. So there's a bit of a, a safety in numbers there. So an example of this is schools of fish, flocks of bird. Uh, another one that happens, especially with birds, is that when there's a big flock moving around, uh, predators can't zero in on one particular organism, so therefore they well, they get confused by the other ones flying around and are poorer at picking them off. And finally, and again, not technically an interaction, but something that is very, very important in ecosystems, and that is decomposers. So the decomposers, and we call them detritivores, okay, so... Remember, vor is 
what something eats, herbivores, carnivores, here's detritivores, uh, and they consist of worms, fungi, maggots, bacteria, all those sorts of things. And they feed on detritus, and detritus is any dead or, and decaying organic matter. And they break this organic matter down into smaller organic molecules, and those organic molecules can be recycled back into the earth uh, to be taken up again and go back through the process. So this isn't technically an interaction, like we don't say that uh, maggot eats fox, uh, because that's not quite how it works, but it's important to remember that these are occurring in the background and they affect the ecosystem.